So as you guys are aware, Def and I have, we've gone ahead and played Project Gorgon for about a month and a half, and we've been able to develop our first impressions of the game, and I think kind of like a long lasting impression of the game, at least in its current state, right? Right. So when we when we talk about, you know, our, our final thoughts with Project Gorgon, we're, we're not talking about, you know, how would we rate this game and, you know, would we recommend it and stuff like that. We just want to talk about what we think about the game and you've we've already addressed some of this in the rant right we've already addressed some of this in some of our other videos you know both positive and negative attributes of the game but i think we kind of want to go over our our overall thoughts and our final experience with the just, game just just be real our experience as as players of the game us you know just having fun diving in and and just seeing what project gorgon has you know right exactly so, do you have any thoughts that you would like to start off with before I dive into some of the ones that I've kind of jotted down from my time playing? Uh, I want to say that I didn't expect to like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being brutally honest. I did not expect to like like it at all. So, going into it, what was the what what were your reasons for oh, it's, possibly not liking it? Man, it's the graphics, dude the graphics it's the gra and i know that's like you know because we've been getting into old school emulators and all that kind of thing and i you know i'm, I'm an eq1 fan right um so the graphics are you know not that big of a deal but i uh <laughs> <laughs> i think you said all you needed to say about that in the ramp yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that was just a big turnoff but you know once you you start getting out there and you adventure and when you get out you know it's a small game but yeah. it doesn't feel small, you know? It's like you get out there and you're venturing and then everybody's nice for the most part. <laughs> uh, everybody wants to help you. I, it feels like if you were playing the next and greatest MMO almost. Yeah, because it's like there's not a ton of people playing the game, but there's enough people playing the game in a smaller MMO where it's like, what, five or six zones, but then twice or three times as many little dungeons. So you're going to run into people, and it right. feels active. It feels busy. It, even I would even venture to say that it feels busier than some of the bigger emulators oh. we've played. Oh, yes, indeed. And, you know, like we talked about in the community video, like the community in the game does have that classic MMO feel, right? Yeah. But really, like, when you first loaded it up, it was kind of like that. I think you expected more when I was like, all of like people were recommending Project Gorgon to us. Like, right. you guys were recommending Project Gorgon. Check out Project Gorgon. So yeah. we tried it out, and then both of us were like, oh, so <laughs> so, it's 1998 again. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 don't, I can't remember who it was, but they said, uh, you know, like, didn't like it at first, but now I'm hooked. Yeah. And that's kind of like the same boat I'm in. Like, it's kind of like, I didn't really care for it at first, you know. Yeah, I was kind of in the same boat. Like, if you remember... When people were telling us to play it, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to play a game that has, like, the little loot box, like, the little box, which, again, was addressed yeah. in the rant. The go boxes, man. It, it, it's like, it, it's so, it takes the immersiveness of the game and just breaks it in half. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not like the graphics are really, you know, providing an immersive, immersive experience anyway. Right. So, it's, like, there's... It sounds and, like we're just shit talking, really. Well, well, no, but no, for but like once you break through that barrier of, of just you you just kind of get over the graphics and it's just like you see the game for what it is and there's fantastic mechanics. Yes. It. I mean, it's it's the all the skills, the skills. That's what makes the game. You got stuff to work for all the time. But my point is, is that you you know you got past the graphics looking like. <laughs> and 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 the loot boxes were annoying, but after a while, it's just part of the game, right? You know, when EQ One put out their new loot system, it was a nightmare. I I did not want to play the game after that, but I got used to it, and it's just part of the game now. You yeah, know, and it's exactly, just, you you forget that the box is even there. Yeah, it's just natural now. You know, especially when you learn your hotkeys. Like what was it? Uh, control. Uh, control shift or shift. Shift tab? shift tab something like and that and you to interact so it allows you to kind of tab through targets that stack yeah up so you're not other. having to filter through you know the boxes and all that and you just it just becomes a natural thing right yeah 
So, I mean, all right, so we talked a little bit about, like, that negative perspective of it, but then you talk about the mechanics. Now, that's something Eric and Sandra did a really good job of. I mean, obviously, there is that influence from the EverQuest 2 and Asheron's Call 2 and, and you know, their, their programming background, their engineering background. And, obviously, graphics aren't a thing that are of a concern right now. Right. And we've seen the results of that because I've said plenty of times, like, the, the f***ing coding of this is just so sound like it just feels like it, it doesn't feel buggy it doesn't feel broken mm -hmm. it feels like everything is supposed to flow like it like it was designed that way and it is working as intended yeah so i think that's really cool but let's talk about that to a further extent and we're gonna any of the negative stuff that we're gonna talk about is likely addressed in the rant right mm -hmm. so we talked a little bit in the rant about uh crafting skills <laughs> And that's, that's a big thing for me, man, because it's like, you want, like, we, we picked a week and we're like, we're going to do crafting skills this week. Yeah. And, we, and you're like, I'm going to try alchemy. And I'm like, well, I'm going to find something to do. I'm going to do like tailoring. And I worked like for two days getting a bunch of cotton and stuff like that. And I, I sat down to tailor and I'm thinking I got all night to tailor. Mm -hmm. I tailored for 15 minutes until it was like, well, you need, uh, you need tanning, you need leather working, you need cheese making. And I was just like, what the hell, yeah, man? Yeah, it kind of screws your, your 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 plans, you know? Yeah, because it ruins the flow, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, well, I just want to do this one thing. Well, I got to do these 500 other things, you know? Right. But it, at the same time, that is, it's actually kind of cool in a way, right? I, I mean, you, you know, and listen, I just want to say this. I complain and I make fun and, you know, in the rants and stuff, but like, you can't complain for having too much to do. You're absolutely right. You know? And that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the whole fact in this video in particular is that there's just so much to do in the game that a lot of times you end up going back to the drawing board, whether it's you're going back to the drawing board in terms of combat skills because maybe something didn't mesh well with what you were leveling right. or you're having to go back to the drawing board because you didn't realize that you were going to need three other crafting skills to level up, you know, this main trade you wanted to level up. Right. But ultimately, like you said, there's always something to do and it's not just going and doing damn dailies and, and raising some sort of rep. Yeah. And, you know, even the favor systems in the game are like crazy cool <clears throat> to the extent that... That's a good point, you know, not having dailies in the same repetitive type thing. Right. Uh, because, you know, you're working on your trade skills. You're going to need this and that from wherever you need to get it and however you need to get it, you know, whether it's uh, farming pigs or, you know, whatever you got to yeah. do just to get all the mats you need to get on the, the you know, to, you know. Right, to get where you need to be, right? To get where you need to be. Sorry, yeah, so, I, I have brain fart. Uh, that's all good, dude. So... Like, it's really cool in that regard. Like, there's always something to do. Uh, the game design in and of itself, like, it, there's there's just, you can always do something. It's, it literally, like, if you go into it like I am, like an analytical person, mm -hmm. you want to figure out what you want to do and fine tune that. But the reality of it is, is I think this is one of those games that's designed for people that are just ultimately in the end going to do everything. Yeah. And this is another complaint I have is that you know we've played with other people and i've read on forums and i've read on reddit and from personal experience the game feels very one player sometimes like it's almost the, one of the complaints that i had uh, written down with, for this particular video is is crafting skills don't seem to have inner inter, interdependency amongst players there's interdependency amongst the skills right. but players instead of like i don't like to survey a lot of people don't like to survey but I feel like people go out and they survey anyway because there's not enough gems in the market. You know what I'm saying? Right, like there's yeah. in the economy, there just aren't enough of those gems. So they go out and they do it themselves because the price points are so high. So everything becomes self-sustaining. Everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like there's a lot of one player capability almost too much so that it almost encourages it I, I could see that i mean i could see getting lost you know logging on getting lost in my own world because you know i gotta go out and do this now i gotta right. go out and do that now well i'm not gonna ask you know my friends in my in my guild to you know 
hey, come help me farm this or farm <laughs> that. You know what I mean? Right. And then the thing is, is like you don't even realize it. Like when I was doing stuff for my werewolf quest, mm-hmm. I ended up getting like four levels, not even trying because right. I was just killing stuff. And I was like, oh, I got four levels. Well, I mean, I, this is kind of soloable. But it's not to say that there's not group content. I mean, there's plenty of group content oh, in yeah. this game. You know, we've got all the different dungeons in Serbial. You know, you've got the... Uh, you've got the sewers, you've got the crypts, you've got Borg, you've got uh, carpal tunnels. And that's just in like one of the first zones. Yeah. You know, so there's all kinds of group content that you, you can do. And we actually encountered the group content right out the gate because we took the alternate way off the island and went yeah. immediately into the spider cage. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And we spent what? An entire like four and a half hours in there? Not, not even, this is not going back into it, guys. <laughs> this is us leaving the island and we're like, well, where does this go? Yeah. And we spent like four and a half hours just going through that spider cave and died to the mega spider like at least two, three times. Yeah, and we went back and we killed we that killed mega that spider. Bitch. <laughs> we killed her. <laughs> Twice. And then we killed the, the mega spider in the crib over and over and yeah. over and over. Yeah. And that, that was a nice feeling. And that's another nice thing about the game is like it does give you that classic feel of I worked for this. Yeah. And then I accomplished yeah, this. Because we had to get better gear to go back in there, yeah. you know, and some levels in our, you know, it was, you know, I, I have to say, though, um, this this element of adventuring, you know, and, and, and killing these unique bosses that mm-hmm. may have this negative effect that can oh, be yes. permanently damaging to you you know like when you had the big head dude yeah that fucked me and we had to go back into the cave and kill it and eventually kill it because your big ass head was just driving me nuts that was the time that we turned into deer man yeah when we were fighting the deer I had boss no idea what was going on and yeah. uh yeah i was like verdance was like well do we do we pull it and i was like eh might as well well we we, we ran into another guy and yeah like, we can try and just he joined our group, and then next thing you know, we're all deers. <laughs> we pulled, and we all turned into a deer, and then I was panicking because like none of my werewolf abilities were working. I know. Uh, dude, and then we just wiped, and it was great. And we were stuck as deer, and we had to actually go get the undeer pots from yep. the guild bank. Yep. And, and then, oh, we were we were leveling. We were out there running around with uh, Renfail that night. Yep. So it was me, you, and Ren, and another guy who had a name that was similar to Verdant's, but it was another V. But anyway, yeah. if you are Here's that person, you know who you are. Yeah, you know who you are, <laughs> bitch. I said I liked you. <laughs> oh, sorry. We'll edit that out. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely edit that out. Sorry. Or not. Well, we can do it. Maybe not. We'll see. But yeah, so like, there's a lot of... I feel like there's a mix of negative and positive coming from this. But let me be clear to you guys. This is a game that offers everything that you're looking for in terms of adventure this is a game that offers unique bosses unique gear drops uh, uh tons of different crafting to enhance yourself you've got augments where you can change the stats on your gear you've got shamanistic confusion where you can change stats on your. you can play animals you can when you can become a werewolf and when we're talking werewolf i don't want to spoil too much but when you become a werewolf you become a werewolf it's a thing like it's not just oh i can now shift in and out of form yeah it's like there, there's some lore associated with it same with being a druid and a priest like it there's actually some meat and potatoes that go along with yeah. that and it's a permanent commitment and there are some restrictions that you will experience by doing it and it just i it's just one of those games like one of the things i'm excited about saga of leucemia is because they're going to just throw you in a world and say you're a human yeah. you're not this predestined hero in a way lore wise in project gorgon you kind of have like with the hag story yeah you're, you're kind of predestined a little bit but you know it's not like this predestiny that's like this this theme park right it, it's it really is a sandbox yeah it's definitely a sandbox i mean there it's you know and i don't want to compare it to guild wars 2 but you know how right. when you're clearing a zone in Guild Wars 2 mm-hmm. and you're doing all these objectives at one time, you're getting the waypoints, you're getting the quest done, you're getting the, uh, I forget what else there is. And, but it, you know what I'm saying. By the time you clear that whole zone, right. you've done got this amount of XP or this amount of levels done and you, you, you've cleared the whole zone, which is an accomplishment in itself. Yeah. When you you know like you were just saying you know you go out and you're you're working on your crafting and you next thing you know you got four levels in werewolf you know right <laughs> and that that's the beauty of this game you, you're set off after you leave that island you are just on your own you know whole world to explore 
Um, and each zone is pretty big. Yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, it is. And that's where the community comes in. Now, just a, just a heads up. We did have some stuff planned for you guys. We were working with some people that are making modifications to the wiki. Um, that we had like a zone flow for you guys. And uh, that hasn't been officially released yet, but once it is officially released, I will go ahead and make sure to update this video with that zone flow. We'll do that. We'll also add that to the uh, the 10 tips guides and the, the newbie starting guide. Okay. Just so that way you guys have it. But, um, you know, it's very interesting how the zones flow. Because, again, going back to Anagog Island, we, when we left the island, you can teleport to one zone or you can walk through the caves and you're in a different zone. But somehow, mm -hmm. ultimately, you're in a zone with with comparable enemies but you teleported which there's there's minimal difficulty around that right or you went through a dungeon that you didn't even realize was like five levels above what you should have been fighting yeah and then you get out of it and then you realize that in that zone they actually want you to go back in there and you were intended to go into that cave from that zone in the first place yeah so it's like it, it, there's puzzles, there's adventures, there's challenges. You know, even though there's no death penalty in the terms of lost XP or having to run back to your corpse, there is that time incentive. Like getting all the way to the end of Kerr Tower, and I'm like, dude, we better not die. We better not die. We better not die <laughs> because we then have to spend an hour working our way all the way back in. Yeah. So there is that like that fear of loss. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Overall, like it's it's a new experience, but it's mixed in with that old school right. feel, man. Like right. you you got to be careful. You can't just you know when we were uh, traveling with Ren, you know, you were yelling at me, Dad, don't go running off. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not trying to, dude. They act, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, like they they were just, you know, I, I was making mistakes. I might have been drunk that night. I don't know, but you know. They were like, stop f yelling at me. I was <laughs> like, but you're going to pull everything, and you practically did. But you know what? We killed those everything. We did. We did. Uh, there's just, so, I had so much fun with this game. I really did. Yeah. So you, you were deep. So there's, there's good things, and there's bad things. And there are things that we, like, we know that are inherently bad that are intended to be fixed because, you know, this is a small team project. And a lot of it, you know, we make cracks at it. You know, like animal handling, we make cracks at it in the in the rant, but yeah. really, like in our hearts, in a good place. You know, this is just kind of like shit that grinds our gears. Yeah. Because animal handling is one of the best skills in the game for leveling up other other uh, abilities. Right. But if you go in there and you have lower HP because you're now rocking a lower level ability and your pet is not tanking as intended, well, it kind of sucks. Yeah. So like little shit like that, like yeah, we're we're, we're kind of we're, we're harsh on it a little bit, but it's really just kind of like. You know, we take jabs at each other as buddies. Yeah. And it's because, you know, we really like the game. We appreciate what everybody there at Elder Game is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that any game that's out there to kind of disrupt the in, the industry to bring back these older MMOs, at, at least in, in concept, core concept, I think that's a good thing to do. Yeah. And we want to be there to support them. So uh, I'll go ahead and give the floor to you. Your What are your absolute final thoughts on the game? Tell our audience. I, like I said, I didn't like the game at first. And I just couldn't get past the graphics. Once we got past the, once I just dove in, got my toes wet, uh, the me it became really clear to me that the mechanics is, is what this game is about, you know. And, uh, you know, from being an old school MMO gamer, uh, I fell in love with it. I got legit addicted to the game i mean it sucked me in you know just just as what we were all just talking about you know you, you you're, you're out in this world you got all this stuff to do you're comp no matter what you're doing you're accomplishing right. something um uh that being said this this would have to be if i if i play project gorgon when i play project gorgon it has to be the only game that i play just simply because there's so much. Right. There is so much to do. And if if you're getting bored and, and Project Gorgon, you, you probably should just move on to something else because you have no excuse to get bored. Right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how I feel about about the game. Yeah. And, and that kind of segues into to something we talked about before we started doing this video. 
and that is the fact that I myself playing the game a little bit more on the level as a regular game compared to what you've been playing it for this project. Um, I myself am getting kind of bored. So my thoughts on the game, um, everything that we've just talked about, I love how it's this throwback. I would have never expected myself to enjoy it. I've never really enjoyed skill-based games, but this is coming from a perspective of uh, I played RuneScape. And RuneScape didn't really give it to me because it didn't make me want to pay for their subscription that I felt like was really necessary to really enjoy the game to its fullest. So playing this, I never played Asheron's Call, jumping into this, getting into a guild with old Asheron's Call players, uh, having this community around you, like I felt like I was at home because when we first went down this rabbit hole, there was kind of this little, mm, I want to try P99, but well, if there's P99, there must be Final Fantasy. And when I found Nisomi, I just was, I was head over heels. I, yep. I was like, I just like, I did not know how much I wanted that experience of the old school MMO. Right. And when I got back into it, I was just like head over and he head over heels in love with Nisomi. Yeah. And this gave me that experience in a modern game, uh, sort of. <laughs> kind of modern yeah uh, but it, it, they're like these these systems are really they work really well together there's a lot of mesh in the combat skills the levels of, of the zones the craft skills uh and there are so many different skills and so many little we'll call them bullshit skills you know like it's like, yeah. like nature appreciation and all of that is super cool and i really like that yeah. uh as far as you know whether i see not i see myself playing this it'll be more more along the lines of uh, kind of what you said. If if I play this, it's going to be my only game. And let's face it, we have a YouTube channel that's based around MMORPGs. Right. So if we're playing WoW Classic or Legends of Aria or whatever game comes out, if we start getting heavily involved in alpha testing with Saga of Leucemia, we're going to have time constraints. Right. And this is one of those games that is a time-intensive MMORPG. I was playing this game for hours on end. Like, I mean, we're talking, I was playing like eight to 10 hours a day for a lot of time. And we would purposefully play a little bit when you would get home. Right. And ultimately, like, I got to the point where I was, I was feeling like, you know, what am I doing? Like, I keep, like, I've put so much time into this and I keep going back and I loved it. But at the end of the day, I think it was just too much of a time constraint for me. And will I come back and visit this game? Absolutely. That's one thing I was going to say. Our eyes will be on Project Gorgon. Oh, I'm waiting for the next update. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, keep. we're going to keep our eyes on it for sure. Uh, because if they get that graphic overhaul, bro. It just, there, there's so much here, guys. Um, I think the, my, I think ultimately we can agree on this. The final yeah. thought is, is that there's a free demo. There is no reason why you shouldn't try the free demo. Right. Mm -hmm. And we picked it up for, it was $10 off during a Steam summer sale. And I think it's worth every bit of $30. Oh, you'll get your $30 yeah. worth for sure. And being that there's no required subscription, this is subscription later on will end up being like, a, like it's not a mandatory thing. It's an, it's an optional thing that gives you some additional benefits in the game. Mm -hmm. You're basically like EverQuest or not EverQuest, uh, uh, like ESO. Guild Wars 2, ESO, you know, you kind of uh, BDO, you buy to play initially. Right. And and you, you get that access to the content and, you know, you spend a 30 bucks and you get it. So uh, as far as us recommending the game, like directly, I'm going to, I want to say that we want to avoid like giving it a rating or really saying whether or not yes yeah. or no, you should play it. Kind of take everything that you've gotten with this entire series on Project Gorgon yeah. and, and take all that information and formulate your own opinion. But there is no reason why you shouldn't at least try the demo out and if you do decide to buy it you're definitely going to get your 30 dollars worth yeah whether especially if you've been wanting uh you know an old school mmo feel i mean yeah, this, absolutely. this is uh this is it this is i mean it am i right i mean yeah. old school feel and it's not a rehash it's not some emulator yeah of content you you know you're just getting your nostalgic itch Right, you know. it's not something that's that you just log in, you play for a month, and you go, okay, I scratched that itch. Yeah, yeah. This is something you're like, it makes you want to keep playing a little bit. Right. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah, I think it's it's something that people should take a look at. They should really consider if it's something for them, and uh, you know, again, that demo is there for them to try. Yeah. So that kind of wraps everything up for this this project Gorgon project, dude. Uh, I think we got a couple more videos that are going to be coming. of just kind of little, uh, you know, like little 
bits and pieces. Little nuggets. Yeah, something a little bit fun that'll come after this. But uh, this is kind of our kind of our final thoughts. So thank you all for sticking around through this project. We hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, let us know in the comments on all the videos so that way we can get a good assessment of whether or not this is something we want to try again for our next project. Yeah. And uh, be sure to leave those comments. Do you have any final thoughts for our audience here? Uh, just thank you guys so much if you've been watching this uh, whole series and uh, we do appreciate it. We do hear the feedback. That's why we're doing Project Gorgon, Absolutely. so it, it just it means a lot. So. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much again, and we will see you in the next one.